Hi friends and welcome to another edition of New Start Now. In our studios today we have a young lady, Krista Quillen, who came to us about two weeks ago and I want you to see a clip of when she first arrived. Can we look at that now? Well, I have Crohn's disease and I was diagnosed when I was 11 years old. Um, I can't really handle any kind of food. I always get really sick and have severe stomach cramps and it's just, uh, it's really time for a change and I want to feel better. I chose the New Start program because um, a lot of my family and friends thought it would be a really good idea and I wanted to give it a try too because I thought a new lifestyle would be a good choice for me to help me feel better. Well, while I'm here, I'd like to achieve the goal of feeling better and um, being healthier and stronger and being able to go out with my friends and doing things like normal people would do. Welcome back, friends. And in our studios, Krista, how are you, dear? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Well, what's happened now? You've been here two weeks. You came here a sick young lady knowing that something needed to change in your life. Mm -hmm. Have you learned something that will help you make these changes and get, get better, yeah. basically? Yeah, I've learned a great deal of very valuable information, a whole new lifestyle that I really want to live by because I know that this is the way that will make me feel better. And I actually had blood work done the first week we were here and it looked pretty bad and now I just got results back from a couple of days ago and the blood work looks a lot better so that's a very good positive. And so in two weeks you've, you've seen some change. Yeah. Now we have viewers out there that have a similar problem as yours. Would you recommend that this would be a, pr a program for them to come to get well? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously healing, you know, it takes some time. You're not going to feel completely better but in, in two weeks, but the lifestyle is definitely a positive thing, and it's looking up for me, so I think it would be great for anyone. Even if you're completely healthy, it's, yeah. <laughs> it would be a good thing to extend your life and everything. I just... Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because we're always talking to people about sickness and if you got this and that mm -hmm. and the other thing. But if you're perfectly healthy, you could come here and make a vacation out of it. Do you mm -hmm. think you've been on a vacation here? Yeah, definitely. You don't have, when you cook, you don't have to clean and <laughs> <laughs> you get massages and hydro. That's nice. And, and what other treatments did you have while you were here? Well, I've had the massages every day the um, in hydro with the hot and cold packs on my back to make my blood circulation flow a lot better and mm -hmm. the the doctors have been wonderful I go see them and the exercise counselor and um, the nutritionist is wonderful everyone's so wonderful and the chaplain they all say that they're praying for me and it's really helped a lot it's quite a prayer group we've got here. Huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's wonderful to have people pray yeah. with you when you go to an appointment or Isn't tell that you that they're praying for you. So. Yeah. Now, your doctor is Dr. Ng? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. We're going to have him on the set in a little bit. But, um, you know, the viewers keep want, they want to know what we do here. You know, like, how do people get well? We hear people reversing diabetes, dealing with Crohn's and this kind of problem, that kind of problem. What do you do all day? What, what do you do all day? Well, I wake up early in the morning. like About what time? 5.45 <laughs> is when the bell rings. The bell rings. Which they is, come by with a ding, yeah. ding, ding. So yeah. that's early. And then um, <laughs> 6 o'clock, it's time to go out and stretch. Sometimes we go outside, but if it's too cold, we'd stay inside. Mm -hmm. And then uh, time for breakfast at 6.45, which, you know, you... you have to adjust to all this because yes. a lot yeah. of people like to sleep in. And then uh, there's a fresh start, which is like a, the chaplain gives a devotional and it's and tells stories and really gets you motivated. And then lunch and appointments and mm -hmm. 
dinner and all that stuff. And so between lunch and dinner, we have... Some doctor appointments, or, or between breakfast and lunch, there's also appointments like hydro and massage and stuff like that. Now what about lectures? What about these lectures you go to and the doctors or Mrs. Ng might lecture mm -hmm. you on various subject matter? How many of those do you go to a day? Two. There's one before dinner and then there's one at seven o'clock after dinner. So none in the morning? No, none okay. of the lectures. <clears throat> But the lectures were very helpful, I thought. They uh, really get you thinking about, about food and what's healthy and exercise, just all different learning experiences. And now, I know that you brought your mother with you, mm -hmm. and she's your chaperone or companion, okay. yeah. as, as they say. Uh, has that been a good experience having her here? Did she kind mm -hmm. of encourage you on the way? And oh, she yeah. been your coach? Yeah, definitely. I've, I'm so thankful that she came with me. I, she's like my best friend, and I love to have her here. To, and she loves when, I, when she sees positive changes in me. It makes her feel happy, too. So it's yeah. wonderful to her, for her to see that, and it's a good learning experience for her as well. She has, I'm sure, gained a lot of knowledge yeah. about lifestyle. Has she uh, taken on this lifestyle as well? Oh yeah, she's definitely, when we go home, she's going to do the same thing I do, so. <laughs> Has she been able to keep up with you on the trails and walk mm -hmm. with you? And yeah, so. she's the one that always motivates me. I have, I have a hard time going out in, outside in the <laughs> cold. Right now it's chilly out, so. But she gets me motivated to go. And How many pounds did she lose? <laughs> About six or eight something like she that. lost about six or eight. yeah and yeah. she was a companion it wasn't her it wasn't really her doing it but yeah. somehow it rubbed off mm -hmm. well that's a miracle in itself so um what do you do when you go home what what what's next for you well i'm gonna choose this lifestyle i'm gonna i might not wake up at 5 30 <laughs> but, <laughs> but i still think <sighs> getting up early and following you know to optimal health as much as i can and walk and you know cook for myself and do all the things that i've learned here is what i'll do at home now do you have a job waiting for you at home or not yet um mm -hmm. i'm gonna start going back to school probably in the <clears throat> spring so that's coming up and then if I feel well enough by then, then I'll probably add a job in. Just depends on. Okay. All right. Um, your Dr. Ng, what is Dr. Mm -hmm. Ng as far as your treadmill test? He gave you the treadmill test, right? Mm -hmm. How did you do in comparison from the first and the second? Well, actually, I, I only did the first one. Oh, you did? Yeah, it doesn't, because that really doesn't apply to the Crohn's area of me and but they usually like to wire people up and see how they're doing how did mm -hmm. you do the first one I did really great actually you walk what? Uh -huh. how long uh, 10 minutes oh, so so you win yeah but you're a very young lady how, mm -hmm. how old are you may I ask I'm 19 you're 19 yeah. okay so that's probably why they didn't do that yeah but even it, so uh, I'm glad tired. you yeah. had that experience mm -hmm. I was a little concerned about you when I saw you a week ago. You, didn't, you weren't doing real well. Yeah. So I know it's been an uphill battle for you, and we will continue to pray for you, all of us here on staff. Is there any last-minute thing you'd like to add? I just really think it's a wonderful facility here and program. I think lear the things I've learned is just gold. It's just wonderful. and. You know, and you really learn a lot about yourself, and you learn the power of God. You really see it here, and through everybody, you really see God, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Wonderful. Praise God. Yeah. Krista, thank you so much for joining us on this set. Thank you. And I know you're going to continue to do well. Folks, don't go away, because in a few minutes, we're going to be with Dr. Ng. Well, you've done very well.
Do you have diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, or do you weigh too much? Hi, my name is Dr. Ring, and I'd like to tell you about our 18-day New Start Lifestyle Program. It includes a comprehensive medical evaluation with laboratory studies and an exercise stress test, physician consultations, culinary school, and an opportunity to walk on beautiful trails in the foothills of the Sierras. Your health is one of the most important things that you have. Don't wait. Give us a call at 800-525-9192 or visit our website, newstart.com. Welcome back, friends, and in our studios, as I promised, is Dr. Clarence Ng. How are you, doctor? It's great to be here, Ron. It's good to see you. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? I want to talk about this young lady that um, we just interviewed in our studio, and um, tell us a little bit about her, her condition. I know it's called Crohn's disease, or inflammation of the intestines, but more specifically, what, does, what is she dealing with here? Well, she's dealing with her primary symptoms are just a lot of abdominal <clears throat> pain and upset and she's just uncomfortable and, and a lot of pain and this goes on for much of the day and she tries doing different things eating and the foods up foods up something upsets her so it aggravates the pain and she's had this condition for what uh, seven eight years maybe longer mm -hmm. she's 19 and she's a very wonderful individual, but because of her, her disease and her problems, she looks more like she's 11 or 12 years old because she's very small, she's yes. short, and uh, you know, this is because of everything that's happened to her. Now, mom tells us that they're a meat and potatoes type family. Would this uh, add to the condition? Would it make it worse? or would a lacto or vegan diet be even better? Well, in our experience in working with patients like this, with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and other problems like this, we have found that they respond very well to the type of program which we have here at New Start. And what we are dealing with or what we transition the patients to, they come from whatever they've been doing and they come here and we get them on what we call a whole plant food diet. In fact, as we work with the patients, I said, you need some nutritional guidelines. And there's five words that summarize this very nicely. And uh, those words are whole plant foods eaten whole. W-P-F-E-W, -E very simple. So what and that means, doctor, if I may inter interrupt for a moment, that means anything that grows in the ground, you eat it like it comes out of the ground, cooked or not? Well, they can be cooked and so on, but now there still are some plants that grow that you really don't want to eat. There's, you know, there's poisonous plants, <laughs> okay, yeah, but well, of, of the edible, of oh, the the edible, edible plants... I should have prefaced it with yeah, the edible. Of the edible plants, <laughs> yes, we prefer that uh, people eat plant foods. You know, another thing sometimes we use to help them understand is that, um, you know, if it has a mother or a face, you shouldn't eat it. Okay? <laughs> a mother and or a face, mother or, or if it face. comes from a mother or yeah, face. Right. I get it. See, and another one is uh, your, your stomach is not a graveyard for dead animals. Oh. See, if it's dead, you really don't want to eat it. When you say it like that, I can't imagine why anyone won't want to eat animal. Well, you know, the yeah. graveyard for dead animals, just ew. Well, that's right. In fact, one of our guests called and told us, you know, I was, went back home and I was having dinner with my grandchildren, and uh, chicken was on the menu. Now, she says, I wasn't going to eat that, but so my grand, grandson uh, was talking, and he says, Grandma, he says, we're having chicken. And uh, Grandma said to her grandson, says, you know what chicken is? You know what that is? She says, that's dead chicken. And the little boy looked at his mama and he says, Mama, is that right? Is that dead chicken? 
And Mama says, Grandma's right. He said, I don't want any. <laughs> so, you know, it's like another way we say, it. do you want your protein first hand or second hand? You want pre-owned protein, used protein? If you do, you can get it in, you know, fish and chicken and beef, you know, and lamb. That's because these animals eat or, that yeah, they plant. eat the plants. That's the primary source of protein. And then the humans eat the animal rather the human, than the plant. That's right. Typically. Right. And, you know, when you get patients with these problems and you transition them and get them on a plant-based diet along with uh, the nutritional counseling, which is available here, and the careful monitoring and the other things, uh, it's remarkable how well they do. And Krista is a prime example of that. Now, what specifically do we do with our guests? I mean, I know each one is individual, but with Krista, anything in particular that you did for her that perhaps you wouldn't have done for a, a guest with diabetes or high blood pressure? Well, you know, there's probably a little bit more emphasis on nutrition, food selections. Uh, we, f we find that large varieties of food for a person with gastrointestinal problems, as Krista had, it's better to cut those down to maybe two or three types of food at one time. And, you know, this, and also encouraging them to avoid irritating spices like, uh, you know, chili peppers and Tabasco sauce and things like this. And, and you know, just regular pepper that people put on their food. But you, we, don't, we don't serve that here. No, right? no, we don't serve that here, right. but they need to know that when they return home. Mm -hmm. In fact, as we were talking to Krista, you know, my wife who's a dietitian, we were talking to Krista today. We mentioned that, you know, Krista, we know you're feeling better. And when you return to your home, uh, as you're feeling better, we don't want you to start to add some of these things back, you know, uh, start to use maybe some uh, spices that are going to be irritating or doing other things because then you will have a relapse. Yeah. And we've seen this time and time again from people we've heard, you know, they're doing very, very well. They say, well, I'm feeling so well, I just want to go back and try something like this. Yes. You, know, so you really need to stay away from that totally and completely if you want to allow your gastrointestinal tract to heal up completely. And it takes time because they're gastrointestinal tract has been severely, uh, you know, inflamed. And many of the medications are aimed at cutting down and suppressing the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And it just takes time with this type of program and, and this approach for that healing to take place. And when it does take place, you know, they're, they're so much uh, happier and pain-free. In fact, we had a, an individual in one of our previous programs and near the end of the program. He says, you know what? He said, Every day before I would wake up in pain, and I would have pain almost all day long, and I would be in bed. I couldn't get out of bed because I was so uncomfortable. But he says, you know, today I have almost no pain, and that hasn't been like, you know, hasn't been like that for years. And a day or two later, he says, I don't have any at all. Oh. And he was just overjoyed. And I've called him since, you know, contact by email and phone, and he continues to do well, oh, okay. as long as he continues to follow the program which has been outlined. Now, Krista's mother is here, and she's also lost pounds. She's been kind of a companion or an observer. And um, she tells us that when they get home, they're cleaning out the refrigerator and the cupboards, and, you know, they're really on this program 100%. So I think that's a blessing that mom came here. Did you have an opportunity to visit with her as well? Oh, yes, because uh, many times she would come in with Krista and we would talk together. And she's very supportive. And, you know, it's been a real challenge to the family because they've had to, you know, just shepherd and nurture her. With, and, you know, it makes me sad to see someone like this so young with so much life ahead to be in so much uh, pain and misery. Yeah. Is there anything you can say to our viewers that might help those who have that condition? Well, you know, if you're willing to transition to a uh, totally plant-based diet, that's a very important first step. And then you probably need to cut down on uh, the different, how many different varieties of food you eat at one time. And also you need to eliminate irritating spices and things like that. Yeah. Dr. Ng, we're running out of time. I want to thank you for joining us in our studio. 
Uh, God bless you and the work that you do here at the New Start program. And folks, thank you for joining us, but don't leave just yet because we have an important message for you in a moment. Greetings and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have Dr. DeRose, and Dr. Rose, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's great to be with you again, Kathy. Well, good. What do you have to share with us today? I know something exciting. Well, it is. I, one of my favorite topics when we talk about total health mm -hmm. is something called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Wow. I did it. You, you must have heard of that before. Uh, this is the first time. I'm excited to hear what you got to okay. say, well, though. <laughs> well, sometimes we just abbreviated BDNF. BDNF. That's easier. Okay. Okay. But for those who might like to just get up to speed with why we call it brain-derived neurotrophic factor, okay. I'll, I'll explain that. Okay. Brain derived obviously means this compound comes from the brain. Okay. So your brain makes it. Okay. It's brain derived. It's a neurotrophic factor. Neuro refers to nerve cells. Okay. Trophic refers to growth. Mm -hmm. So this is a naturally occurring brain growth factor. Your brain makes it. But we don't all have the same levels of BDNF. And scientists at this point do not know any way to give you BDNF by mouth or some other way and increase it in your brain. Oh. So we've got to find some other way if we want to boost our levels of this compound because mm -hmm. it's very exciting. Research is telling us if we've got higher BDNF levels, mm -hmm. we got lower rates of stroke. Oh. We have lower rates of Alzheimer's disease, lower rates of Parkinson's, wow. lower rates of depression. So you can see why this would be sure. an exciting compound, and yeah. there's a lot going on in the research community. So we're beginning to unfold some of the things that actually cause BDNF levels to either rise or okay. fall in the brain. Mm -hmm. You interested in any of those? Oh, yes. Let's hear what you got to share. Okay. <laughs> this is exciting. One of the first ones that actually raises BDNF levels is fasting. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's explain why that is. Okay, well why it is, researchers think it has to do with fasting being a mild stressor to the brain. So when you're not eating, it puts a mild stress on the brain and that causes the brain cells to put out this nerve growth factor. What happens is, as we look at animal research, this is where we've uh, worked this out the, the most comprehensively, and I'm not an animal researcher, mm -hmm. I'm kind of speaking generically mm -hmm. as me being part of the medical research community. They actually find that if you cut back caloric intake, whether it be a fast or just decreasing meal intake, okay. you actually can raise levels of this compound. And it doesn't take a lot. 20-30% decrease in caloric intake can make a significant difference. Now, Kathy, you may have heard this before, but if you look at longevity research in animals, are you aware of one of the most consistent factors known to increase longevity? No. It is actually fasting. Really? Decreased caloric intake. So like skipping one meal, two meals? What is the definition well, of fasting? Well, let me put it this way. When we talk about cutting back. Okay. If you give an animal 20% less calories mm -hmm. than its peer, okay. that animal who's getting less on a daily basis will tend to live about 20% longer. Wow. Cut back the calories 30%, how much longer do you think it lives? Oh, my, my, twice the amount? 30% longer. 30% longer. It's, it's almost a direct, direct relationship. relationship. Cut okay. back the calories 35%, uh, lives 35% longer. Now, of course, you can't cut the calories back 99%. No. No. Right? <laughs> you, you, you know, there's a point of diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is it almost seems like in this world of sin, we're programmed, if you will, mm -hmm. to process a certain amount of food and then die. Yeah. So the more we eat, the sooner we die. The sooner we die. Yeah. Now, some of us are thinner than others, mm -hmm. and some people may say, well, that's not fair. You can mm -hmm. eat more food and not gain weight. Well, it doesn't work that way when it comes to BDNF. Those who are being more abstemious, cutting back more, seem to have higher BDNF levels. But it isn't only watching your food intake. Physical exercise also boosts levels of this brain protective compound. Wow. And what about foods, different types of foods? 
Well, I that haven't seen anything in the literature that has really nailed down any specific foods. Now, there is one thing that's sometimes classed mm -hmm. uh, with diet, and that is alcohol, alcohol mm -hmm. and beverages. They actually seem to disrupt neurotrophin levels. Okay. Instead of uh, enhancing mm -hmm. these natural brain compounds, they raise them, uh, some of them in certain level parts of the brain, depress them in others, mm -hmm. and there's a whole family of these things, not just BDNF. So alcohol seems to be undesirable as far as the natural balance of the brain, but as far as other nutrients I haven't seen right. details. But one last right. thing I should mention that is helpful for this compound, and it is environmental enrichment or mental challenge. Okay, that I'm, is amazing. Yeah. Yes, that's so mental challenge being. Well, am I challenging you right now? Yes. Are you kind of stretching <laughs> you? Well, see, you're raising your BDNF levels. Yes. You know, you're trying to oh, good. You know, keep on your toes here as I'm throw, throwing new terms out at you. So well, you can say, look, if nothing else was accomplished in our visit, mm -hmm. at least your BNF, BDNF yes. levels likely like rose. Went up. Oh, that's exciting. For those of you who would like to also have your BDNF levels uh, increased, then please visit our website at newstart.com. Thank you for joining us. Modern views of evolution stem all the way back to theories developed in the mid-1800s. Out of the same time period came ideas that shape our educational system today. The common school movement, for example, saw schools more like a factory with students blindly memorizing instruction rather than thinking for themselves. Their curriculum was rigid and theoretical. Instead of being flexible and practical, it was designed to conform the individual into a specific ideological mold that fit the needs of an old industrial era long since past. Just like our view of creation in six literal days, we believe the Bible contains an educational blueprint radically different from the one we see now. Well, friends, that's it for today, but I want to leave you with a thought. As Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that you were bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Friends, I know those of you who are sick, or you know someone who's sick, pick up the phone and give us a call at one 800 525 9192.